Welcome to this uh, uh, class on the business ethics, holistic views and framework for business ethics. Uh, and uh, so the learning outcome today that uh, I would like to share is, uh, uh, well, first of all, overview the business ethics, uh, uh, understanding it so that we can understand how uh, doing good is is doing the uh, 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 good for the company as well. I mean, doing good for the society is doing good for the company as well, and and uh, and eventually can deliver this. Uh, it becomes a foundation uh, for a, a competitive uh, uh, advantage or competitiveness ability to compete in the world to sustain uh, this uh, economic uh, innovation. And and and, and uh, without uh, uh, also um, uh, uh, jeopardizing the uh, uh, qualities of the of the societies and and the uh, ecological uh, system. Well, business ethic is uh, highly relevant to sustainability and uh, you know the ability to sustain. And uh, we have to look into the relationship uh, because when we talk about ethic, it's about the. You know the, the relationship between two peoples, or you know, with yourself within the communities, or you know, conforming to the rules and regulations. So it really, it's about the relationship, and that relationship, the diversity, the relationship, the respecting of each other's, the feedback systems, the relationship. It's a uh, really importance for sustainability, for ecological sustainability. I mean, you look at the you know the natural plants and and biological systems. They're all about uh, the relationship between. Uh, you know the plants and the and the sunlight with the you know carbon dioxide and photosynthesis and the you know the water systems and the roots which is the you know uh, uh, promoting those nutrients and things like that through these uh, bacteria and fungus whatever so it is really a relationships of a web of you know uh, all these uh, elements right the, uh, that that uh, delivers the fundamental basis for sustainability so we will. Uh, uh, look into those pictures. There, of course, there are a lot of uh, situation, a lot of knowledge uh, we can drill down, and it's impossible. This is only uh, uh, grips, uh, iceberg grips of the uh, of uh, what it's uh, covered. Uh, you know, in in the perspective of business ethics, and, and from the framework perspective, so it is. Uh, 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 it would contain a lot of information, but integrate in the framework manner so that it is very concise and. Uh, very easy to uh, uh, to digest, but but it, it is uh, because it's con concise. Uh, it uh, it has a lot of uh, intense uh, knowledge, and so uh, really we have to be very slow and pay attention. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, uh, quite difficult to deal with the complexities of the of the subject. And uh, students would uh, learn how to develop their competences towards sound business ethic decision as a result of understanding all this framework. It uh, helps the students to uh, know what are the factors, uh, variables that are important to, you know, to uh, decisions making and so that they can uh, make a sound decision, right? Uh, and so this is the ultimate objective of, uh, of, of the practitioners. Uh, you know, like a CEO uh, or, or students who are learning the classes know how to uh, uh, judge and, you know, the situation, uh, the ethical situation, and then from there, you know, evaluate, evaluate the, you know, the, uh, the, the sensitivity of the situation, the soundness of the ethical uh, suggestion, and then, and, and, and therefore make a proper uh, a propose uh, an effective or at least uh, you know a sound business ethic decisions making because if you're making a wrong decision ethically it could really uh, it could really sometimes uh, brings a lot of negative impact uh, to the organizations in, in terms of reputations in terms of uh, losing the monies and uh, court cases and things like that so it is uh, really a big issue and uh, and, and it's every page is quite concise in this particular slide. Uh, other slides are very big in words, so it's uh, not many words, so we can 
uh, easily understand and pick it up. But uh, because this slide is it's uh, tend to be is intended to be uh, con uh, concise in in in, in detail uh, through but uh, through structural uh, understanding of the framework. So uh, all of the uh, use would have to pay a little bit attentions on those words and we will go a little bit slow. And uh, so uh, let's go through them step by step and in a line by line, whatever, but in a, in a very slow sense. And then uh, let's see how we can understand the business ethic and, and build the, uh, the foundation for business ethic. What well, uh, here says ethics deals with uh, some standards of uh, of how we can know that uh, uh, how we can behave in in in, in our societies. Uh, for instance, in our career, we have professional code. Uh, we have you know we, there is certain uh, rules and regulations in the companies that we have to uh, comply with, and there are certain rules and regulations of the society as well as the uh, the the laws right of this of a nation. So there is those laws, those uh, rules and regulations, including uh, maybe uh, policies, right, in the company. Those are called standards. There are the standards for uh, determining or at least shedding light on what are the right thing to do and, and what kind of, you know, behaviors or, you know, speech and our action and the things that we do that are uh, considered uh, uh, acceptable to the society, we call it right, right? And, uh, and, and on the other hand is the wrong conduct. Uh, there is a difference between uh, uh, ethics and morality. Uh, ethic, it's more uh, towards uh, uh, philosophy. So we really have to uh, look into the philosophical understandings of why uh, and, uh, and so that you can help us to uh, understand uh, you know, in a situation whether, uh, you know, uh, under the view of this philosophy is that applicable to uh, judge whether the situation or the action that we take is uh, uh, ethical or not ethical. So um, uh, this uh, philosophical understanding gets very important. And then uh, uh, this, uh, on the other hand, the morality, it says that uh, 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 it's, uh, you know, just uh, uh, the behaviors, right? Our behavior, you know, conforming to those uh, principles, right? Of this, uh, of this uh, ethical, uh, ethical principles. Or so, so morality is really, it's really about uh, demonstrating, uh, uh, you know, uh, our our personalities, our conducts, and uh, that we are actually adhering to, uh, you know, those. <laughs> ethical protocols or ethical principles or you know the, the ethical issue right so so in a sense one is this uh, uh, theoretical philosophical part the evaluation part the other one is well show me who you are right and the uh, uh, and, and and demonstrate that you are moral persons right you are in that you that you really do what you say you want to do in, in in a way that doesn't harm people and so there is a slight difference between ethics and morality. And for business, uh, uh, this ethical and morality issue means that uh, we are, uh, we have to do something that is, uh, you know, the right thing, that we are, uh, do things in a just, just, just way, that we do not, uh, you know, bias towards uh, certain persons and we, you know, uh, and, and prejudice over uh, against some other, uh, 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 ethnicities or whatever, and or other uh, genders, uh, and we are fair in terms of uh, rewarding people. So, in terms of you know our decision making and uh, and and uh, and of course uh, uh, avoiding doing harms to uh, these uh, different stakeholders. So, what does it mean? Well, in business, there are a lot of people who are at stake with the company company interest. It could be customers. Uh, we're selling them product and services, and if we sell them product that are unsafe and or you know med maybe medical medical drugs, and, and so what happened if this took the drug, you know, and 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 and, and to go into hospital, and that is a very uh, you know it could harm a person's life. So it is very important that we need to maintain 
our morality in 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 the design in the services but then judge upon based on the ethical principles okay and that is exactly this a couple of sentences in the beginning that really uh, uh share light on and uh so uh in a in a way uh business ethics uh is how uh, you know by understanding all these uh, principles and and getting to understand how we act on it morality and and uh, and applying it to you know uh, influence the stakeholders the applications right could be uh, to the investors it could be to the society it could be to the customer to the supply to our suppliers we have to pay on time to employees motivation our you know commitment to them and upgrading their skills and you know give them the capability to continue to uh, change right uh, adapt to the change and that is that is sustainability is all about so sustainability is about a you know, continuous uh, feedback all right and within that relationship where the relationship and so that everybody's kind of you know understanding what is going on among each other and interacting and reacting and and then fostering and the sharing and building the capability for you know continuation right and that is sustainability is all about and, and that exactly is morale uh, action and ethical proto ethical reasoning is uh, of sustainability uh, uh, is it's all about too uh, and so uh, applications on the business ethic also therefore deal with a uh, reasoning process. And, and in this slide, we will, you know, uh, discuss uh, many, many different types of framework and and uh, in uh, many different types of uh, theory and corporate theory talk about, you know, we cannot suddenly jump from one basic foundation of so morality or ethical uh, standpoint to a very higher level of morality and, and it's really a greater process depends on our experience and and a learning process and, and 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 knowledge acquisition just like a baby right we we can't jump straight to the level of knowledge and the capability of the of the mature person so and it's the same thing for ethical understanding it really take a lot of greater procedures okay it's not only the uh a process uh that that also we need to understand but also i mean step by step you know people start to understand what is going on in the environment awareness and then they start to well get some consultations you know hi uh you know what is going on with this uh, things that you know uh, this ethical issue is there any way that i can better solve the issue so kind of you know inviting uh, uh a knowledge and, and consultations and it, 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 or, or maybe look into the principles, right? It, it, you know, in the textbook, and so that we can uh, get some idea how we can uh, uh, judge upon, uh, you know, the, the, the problems that we have, so we can make a decision, right? So, and the next thing, therefore, is make a decision. Once we make a decision, commit to that decision, and the behavior uh, that we demonstrate every day, right, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, and on. You know, particular uh, ethical issue. So good ethics, uh, and, and also uh, it's a very important that we, uh, if you really want to have your, let's say you have a, a culture right, and, and you have a policies or you have a ethical value and you really want that values to be uh, spreading around your companies and, and, and really the diffusion, it's a, a very, very, very important. And, and so our ability to diffuse, to quickly spread the good news uh, uh, and the importance role of the business ethics to uh, all the peoples in, in, and students are very, very, uh, very, very important. And, um, and, and, uh, and we can actually learn that diffusion uh, from uh, theories of the of the technology diffusion, for example, look into this uh, 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 diffusion, uh, this technological accept, uh, you know, uh, market, and we know that uh, you know people. Uh, we have, I mean, market has a lot of people, uh, different types of customers, different types of people, and some other people's, uh, you know, uh, they're really innovators. They, if you if they see some innovation, they will quickly jump into that and. And use it right, and then some of them are well. What they look at the innovation, innovators' uh, behavior, and adopt it very early part in the market, market, uh, market segment. I mean, in the market area time, 
and then and then the the rest of these uh, majorities were once everything's starting to get a, a little bit more mature then they will adopt it right majority adoption and then slowly slowly let majority adoption and, and then the the left behind you know laggards right those left behind not worrying about how to you know that really need to use the digital innovations or ethical uh principles and and so uh, really, business ethic. In order to have an impact, we really need the diffusion, and and uh, and again, uh, diffusion means we diffuse and spread the the good news and the requirements of the knowledge uh, and and, the, and the principles of business ethic to you know to our companies and to our suppliers that they really need to participate in making the process of value chains green and that that is a belief system and the principle right and and you really need to convince them uh, uh and uh, so to convince them for example you need to um uh yeah, for example you need to uh less complex in less complexities in the implementation so you say we're going to implement a business ethic or you know it's it's not complex if it's very complex, people will not do it, right? Will not uh, apply it, and 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 and, uh, and it's compatible to what they have been doing. Well, you know, it's graining. We need you to grain your value chain, and it's not. It's really compatible to what you're doing. It's just the. It's just that the process needs a little bit of uh, innovative adjustments so that we can, or maybe instead of using. Uh, uh, those uh, uh, instead of uh, using this uh, inventory, to, uh, you know, stock up all this inventory. Why don't we make it lean? And so you you really have to be. Uh, and but the way of doing things is pretty compatible to what you're doing in the past. It's just the uh, minor, uh, some well, not so minor. Sometimes it's pretty huge, uh, in, 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 you know, uh, uh, quantum leap in ideas and belief system. But again, anyway, it is not complicated to do lean and it's compatible to what you're doing before uh, on the routine sense. And people can, if you're not able to do, maybe we can invite you to go and observe how other people is doing, you know, other companies or other people, or the other groups of company uh, or people or teams, you know, implementing business ethics. And so observe, uh, observe the results of other people, maybe try it out, you know, do it and try it out and see whether, you know, people get a better reactions with you. Maybe customers are more happy with you, you know, the way you communicate and more atten attentive to their needs, you know, ethically and, and caring about them. Uh, and, and, and so you can observe and try it out and realize the benefit by yourself. All these uh, are, uh, are the action that can help you accelerate uh, the diffusion. And, 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 uh, and, and the theory that covers this is called the perceived attribute theories, meaning means that uh, people uh, uh, buy in your ideas through understanding the uh, and the perceptions of the you know, different types of attributes. It could be complexity, simplification, it could be observe, observation, whether I can observe it, it can be try, trying out the product. So if you have an innovative product, I can, I can try it out, right? Trying trial uh, and things like that. And it's not complicated to use, other ones I will not use. So some of the complications in, in some of the mobile, uh, it, it makes you not willing to learn because you don't have time, right? A switching cost, right? You, you study consumer behavior. Uh, you know that uh, switching costs, you don't really have sufficient amount of time to work on it. So business leaders uh, uh, and, and uh, organizations with high integrity, integrity principle, uh, integrity capacity, mean integrity means integral, meaning you're doing a good job, the, you know, the pretty perfect, right? Perfect job. So you say what you're going to do, uh, you say what you're gonna do and you do it, right? Integrity, uh, so what the talk, it probably it's another words for that. Uh, and and, uh, and so uh, if you do it like this, if you say and you do it and then and then do it perfectly integral into in, 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 in integrity uh delivering the uh, product and quality services and we and listens to people then you 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 establish uh uh you know whichever you do and talk it's all the same so you establish the unity the cohesions and purpose and action alignment with each other so your messages are not in contradiction and, and your actions are not in contradictions with your missions or with your value or with your core values or principles of ethics and, and or the code of practice. And so therefore it, your company 
slowly, slowly, because of that, people picked up the messages and gradually forms the images and perceptions and gives you the reputation. So you have the reputational cap capital on your hand as a result, which can become your intangible uh, asset, where you can ROI, right? Ret uh, ROA, return on asset, right? And so it is a return on intangible asset. So it is very important. So this, so every pitch, it's very, very uh, important. And every pitch can take very long time. Uh, it could uh, within a couple of seconds, could be a couple of minutes, could be even one hour focusing on one, one page. So I, I really uh, hope that, uh, you know, uh, read them slowly and uh, digest them slowly and, and through your experiences and uh, reflecting and it's really not straightforward in business ethic, especially because business ethic, as I told you, it is it suggests the broader philosophical questions concerning with how one should live our life and with a good human's life, uh, you know, uh, 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 and, 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 and that is a philosophical complexity, which really takes a long time to digest because of extract uh, understanding. And uh, so I'll give an example on ethical value of sustainability. If we do not focus on sustainability, we destroy, do we destroy our own future? Yes, we will destroy our own future because sustainability means continuation. And if, the, if you are not able to sustain, uh, 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 and, and if we say we destroyed all, uh, all these uh, resources, uh, we're not able to sustain. So that's why there is some uh, uh, understanding that, you know, if we go and uh, go to the forest and, uh, and you know, uh, destroys one tree, well, sustainable, right? That another, it will quickly recovers and, you know, uh, growing up again with uh, new trees and things like that. But if you destroy the whole trees, in the uh, every trees in the forest, there will be no species left, <laughs> and, the, and sustainability is gone. And, and and so it is very important. We have to understand the interrelationship of all the trees, and the tree depends on what that depends on what. And if destroy the bee, and and all the flowers disappear, and and so what well, we really have to understand the relationship between us, a business, and our environment, and they need to work hand in hand and they need to, you cannot destroy the environment and think that you can sustain, you, right? No, if you, so sustainability really depends on your development's capability as well as the uh, capabilities uh, of this. And, and that requires signal and messages among each other. So you can make use of internet of things, you can make use of sensors and communicating with each other, right? Natural, they do have uh, capability to interact with each other and sensing each other's, but then uh, in organizations, it's within a closed system, we need sensors to interact with each other's. So uh, therefore, uh, not only individuals, we need collective forces to be sustainable. That's what I'm saying is this, uh, we need the collective understanding of all the relationship and all the factors like our relationship between our company and our communities, you know, the plant, uh, uh, vegetable plants with the CO2s uh, CO2s and this thing. And so uh, this is how we uh, uh, deal with the sustainability. So start with defining and explaining sustainability. Uh, sustainability is, uh, it's, uh, as I say, in a, in, a lame, in a very common language and layman's term is about uh, long term, you know, for a long time, durable, you know, it can sustain, right? sustain, it's not sustaining, it's strong, uh, not durable, and, and systematic, right? uh, systematic and, and sound, and systematic meanings that this thing happened, that thing happened, you know, well, sometimes it's not a very easy causal relationship because if anything happened, it already changes the whole dynamic. So it is a very complicated issue uh, until you uh, you really master the complex uh, system dynamic simulation, it is very difficult. It's not a one-to-one -one causal relationship like we can study easily in our normal research and, you know, even at a PhD level, and it is more complicated than that, right? And uh, so uh, sustainability as development that meets. So we 
we at this moment, we want to have the best line and we want to develop it, but you do not develop until the point that you, you know, you, 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 you compromise the ability of the, of the future generation. So we use all the things and all the trees and we say we're going to produce a lot of papers and we're going to cut all the trees and until all the trees disappear, there will be no trees for the next generation and no need to read the papers and say, well, who cares? It's digitization, right? But, uh, and that is what that we means by uh, sustainability. This is sustainability. There is this do not jeopardize the capability and the, even the condition for the future generations to meet their own need. Okay, so we need to give them uh, and maintain it and even to generate it, uh, recover it, uh, and, and, and until we can, uh, we allow the the system dynamics and this uh, uh, our interaction with the environment to continue, right? Uh, so sustainability uh, therefore involves all kinds of elements. In therefore, definitely your individual, individual company, and uh, the society. And when we talk about society, if we zoom out and zoom into the zoom out to the society and zoom into the society, then we again there are a lot of variables. It could be to secure a better quality of the right, maybe the expectation of it, and, and now into the future, the economics domain. When you zoom into the economic domain, we're talking about you know the economic situations, whether the economic has the capability to sustain it, or you know what kind of level of economics is that an advanced economic or is that uh, Digital economy is that uh, agricultural economy is that uh, urban economy or rural economics, and so it's a lot of uh, detail and ecological uh, environment. Uh, the you know the trees and the green things, the waters, uh, you know the flowing and weathers and things like that. So uh, it's very important. Sustainably, at one level, or domain cannot be built on the exploitation of the others. So if you want to do a good job, don't exploit, you know, make yourself up and then destroy everybody. That is not sustainable. And, and so if the whole everybody disappear and only you, you cannot sell your product. So what is the point of the killing, you know, peoples, right? And, and uh, so sustainably nowadays we see a lot of countries, a lot of our, uh, our societies are, you know, uh, uh, doing things that could, uh, you know, uh, be not sustainable because they are protecting, uh, we are protecting our own uh, our nations or protecting our own countries or account and, and businesses and we jeopardize everybody else. And, 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 right? and, and why not let everybody's core value, core evolution so that everybody becomes more, uh, you know, adaptable and intelligence and, 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 and gives a suggestion to each other. So it is very, very important uh, that we, uh, that we do that to secure better quality of life for all social and both now and for the future generation by pursuing responsible economic ground and therefore for sure responsible. The, the term responsible, uh, it will come to the pictures more and more responsible uh, investment, responsible uh, social uh, enterprise, uh, you know, responsible uh, behaviors and things like that. And in, but why we have a responsibility uh, um, um, uh, following certain uh, principle, ethical principle is is the it's very important. And sometimes it's our duty. And so there is a, a ethical strategy, uh, ethical principles that, that the the name is called the ontology, the duty of, uh, of ability to follow. Because if we do not have that duty we do not follow uh, and then the whole world is going to be in chaos if we do not respect people every you know everybody will not respect us and then the whole systems of disciplines will change and behavior will change right and i will cheat you you will cheat me and you know things like that so it is very important that uh, that we have a duty have an intention to do the right thing that the ontological intention and the ontological duty, the ontological, the ontological responsibility is very, very important. And uh, so uh, both now and for the future by pursuing responsible economic growth, right? Meaning the business, uh, of course, following certain business ethic strategy and, and, uh, and uh, making sure that the society has, uh, you know, justice and equitable progress and, and, and protecting the environment. That, that sustainable 
uh, 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 sustainability to there for uh, uh, a variance. Okay, and so sustainable development uh, can be achieved only when there is a balance attention to uh, we call it uh, uh, 3P, meaning there is a balance between the way you do your business and earn the profit and the way you involve and not, uh, you know, involve and regenerate the societies and help the society or deliver value to the society. You know, the value, the customer is a value, is a, is a society, right? Supply chain, supplier is a society. So whatever you do good in this uh, economy actually is already uh, driving the society. But again, uh, we sometimes only drive the society that interact with us. But then there are also externally uh, the other society, the broader society that that we think is not a part of us. Then we can, you know, it's not a part of us, not our cause. And we can uh, dump the waste on on the neighborhood, right? And 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 the air is the free. We can pump in. We can go to the office and you know freely never think about the oxygens. And and not until the COVID nineteen we found that the oxygens becomes very 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 important. So we are breathing for free. And in our cost analysis, profit, which is a revenue minus all the cost, 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 cost. Do we ever encounter and, and incorporate the cost of the free oxygen? No, right? Not until the whole world go chaos and the, COVID, you know, the pandemics come into the picture, then the air becomes very valuable and we have to buy filters, we have to, we have to buy oxygen, we have to close our windows and tighten it and all this cost, 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 it will reduce our revenue, I mean reduce our profit. And so it is, uh, do we consider those costs? Uh, if you, of course we don't, right? If we consider those costs, you and anything that is cost conscious and cost incorporation will automatically force us to think in that direction. So, uh, and therefore, if ethic becoming a part of the cost consideration, then we will consider ethic. And that is what we have a theory called utilitarianism, consequentialism, meaning the, the utility we're going to provide, the value we're going to provide. And that value is we're going to provide to the stakeholders, to the people is equal to the benefit minus the cost, right? The benefit minus the revenue minus the cost, right? Benefit, whichever benefit, it could, customers could have their own benefits of getting your, your good product. And, but they have a cost of acquiring your product to buy your product. Or well, you yourself also have the uh, benefit, the revenue and the money coming into your pocket and minus the cost of you uh, uh, making the product, which you need oxygen. An example, okay. So it is very, very important that uh, we have all this balanced attention and consideration, and think them, think of them carefully, okay. And and, and uh, this this kind of situation is very complicated, and and uh, no ending. Uh, so I, my job is only to give you uh, a broad understanding on what is going on in business ethics and so that it train us i train uh, we got trained in 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 uh, in thinking right in thinking and, and and when we are starting to train in thinking uh ethics start to ethics start to flow and this is how we uh, uh you know get our business uh, ethics uh, uh in in as a routine and so the let's look into this uh um uh, uh called burke uh, uh, theories of cognitive moral development. What is saying is that the uh, uh, um, we, you know, you and me, uh, develops the understanding and maturity uh, of uh, uh, of ethical uh, understanding and ethical appreciations and ethical decision making in a very gradual step by step manner. Okay, maybe not so gradually. It could be, you know, uh, uh, after a certain point, it could jump. But 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 again, there is this gradual process, right? And and this uh, uh, this gradual process uh, uh, sometimes is uh, uh, the, the it influences our morale values and principles, and uh, and and sometimes the morale principles and values that we learn from textbook and slowly slowly can also influence back the uh, the, the the process of our development. Uh, okay, so these two are interlinked with each other and they both influence the uh, reasoning process of 
whether this is a good decisions to make ethically or whether that is a, a, another one is a, another alternative is a better decisions to make. And then from there, once we have the decision, then we have the behavior. Okay, so this is pretty much the interrelationship uh, sequential flow of a business, et uh, business ethics. So morale development process, uh, so there is a morale development uh, process uh, as introduced and advocated by the corporate uh, theories of cognitive de uh, morale development. And uh, it uh, really manifests and represents in terms of three, uh, the, you know, gradual phases of development. And the first one is called uh, pre-convention. Before you start to have some, well, convention, this is what people are doing. And this is some things that we think you are kind of getting into uh, business ethic understanding and, and, and conformance, right? Conformity. And so pre-convention. And that pre-convention uh, is, uh, is something that, uh, you know, the, uh, it's really, really, you don't think too much. You just obedience, right? Uh, because otherwise you, you know, you got punished uh, if you are not doing, following some of the rules, but you don't care what is going on, whether this rule has any inter uh, ethical implication or not. Oh, wow. I don't know, I, I, right? So may, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, right? Uh, and, but this is a pre-convention, is a, a very rudimentary uh, fundamental understanding. Then the next one is convention. This conventional uh, uh, level is that you already uh, are reaching uh, a good understanding of the society and you are ready to conform to the society whether it's your family at the family levels or at the society level. So it's a conventional understanding, conventional norms, right? Uh, and, 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 uh, and, and so that is a uh, uh, conventional level. And then from then when you move to the more mature level, we call post-conventional. Right? That is the time that you are a little bit uh, different from the conventional norms. You, 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 are, you are higher than the traditional uh, normal uh, society, so, social conventional norm. Society conventional norm. And that requires you to uh, have a better grip on morale values and principles. So you actually uh, implement based on more on the morale values and, and the principles, okay? And that, that is, uh, so it, uh, universal principle ethics will become your, your judgmental uh, uh, criteria, right? Uh, and, and, and so uh, a more sophistication of the society would be the spirit of the law. Okay, it's uh, because there are a lot of cognitive justification in terms of this law, that law, not that straightforward like uh, society. So, so there is this uh, cognitive uh, 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 um, sophistication as we move from pre-convention to convention to post-convention, right? And uh, so if you uh, still don't understand what I just uh, told you, you can, uh, you know, this page may give you a little bit more detail. You can go into, you know, individual uh, question uh, uh, in, in business research. We call question and design, but in, uh, in, uh, in those normal uh, terms, uh, in a scholar's terms, we say, well, look at the, you know, uh, patterns of behaviors uh, for each of this, uh, uh, for each of this title, right? For each of this uh, ethical, uh, uh, levels of uh, of uh, cognitive sophistication and maturity. So let's look at one example. Not necessarily we really need to you know drill in depth into each of them, right? I, I'm sure um, I have already explained it. You can probably uh, by giving you one example, you probably can extrapolate into a, you know another example. So a uh, pre-convention phase. We do things because of the immediate consequence of reactions such as rewards and punishment, okay? So people, if you don't do uh, this according to these rules and regulations, you may get punished, but if you follow it, well, maybe it will give you some rewards, uh, uh, you know, maybe some promotion, right? Uh, if you follow nicely, we'll give you promotion. So I work hard. Uh, uh, last, I should be fired, right? Otherwise, uh, I would be fired. I work hard as uh, it benefits uh, not only me, but my company, right? So you really, there's a reward. So I work hard that uh, I may learn and grow so the you know, benefits of growing. And I work hard for uh, uh, for myself and for, uh, I mean, for, for, my uh, for my colleagues and superiors. So it's really uh, for uh, benefiting the interpersonal uh, 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 rewards uh, relationship. 
So this are uh, it's just some of the typical uh, uh, scenarios or behaviors or patterns of behavior that you would see uh, from the pre-convention until you reach the point of uh, post-convention. Uh, if you want to reach the point of post-convention, you can see that the sentences, the behavior uh, will be more cognitively and rich. Uh, I uh, work hard for work unites. Yeah, I work hard, not simply work hard for rewards or anything, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, for feeling, I work hard because uh, uh, work unites human beings. So you start the reason. If I work hard uh, and the, uh, uh, for work, you know, the work that I do unites every human being, uh, right? And when human beings being united, they can produce better uh, productivities and better innovations and better emotion harmonies and so you start to reason right and that is uh, that is uh, ethical principle and and and, 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 and those principles that you just judge upon it could be respecting the human rights or it could be making use of the human right for the benefits of the whole uh, of the entire uh, company and so this is uh, very important i work hard because everybody should work hard you know the, the ontology is the principles if i work hard you should work hard you know everyone's work hard. if if we don't work hard then then you know we are not justifying for the salary that we pay and things like that so it is uh, uh, very much uh, uh, it could be different types of uh, philosophy, right? Of ethical philosophy. Some of the philosophy a sociological perspective. Some of the philosophical are very rural perspective. The ontology, some of the philosophical, uh, more philosophical perspective. I work out because work, you know, humans humanizes me. Right? Oh, okay. That's uh, very interesting. That's pretty humanistic and very philosophical and, and, and uh, a little bit more extract. Okay. You, it's not that easy to justify that kind of uh, sentences, okay? So, uh, uh, as a corporate uh, executive, uh, we could check, uh, you know, we, now we understand, so as an executive, you know, like you're a CEO, we can check uh, where we stand in, in each of our level. Are we in here? Are we in pre the pre-convention? Are we at the convention? Or if you're at the pre-convention, that means that your companies uh, not quite cognitively mature. And, and so if you don't have the reward, everybody disappear. No productivity because no one is thinking, you know, cognitively driving themselves to think harder and, and especially the worlds are changing. And if you just uh, not allowing and providing a climate and, and facilitating a culture or, 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 or imprint, implement uh, good, uh, you know, human resource practices and, and people are not thinking and, and then suddenly if there's an environment change and the thinking stop and it's just simply, you know, uh, react and the companies kind of, you know, uh, collapse. And this is, that's why it is, uh, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself, where do your company stand for it, uh, standing at? Personally, where would we like to be, right? Where would you like to be? Would you like to be in A, a uh, in the pre-conventions, the conventions, the post -conventions? So this kind of ethical, ask, uh, uh, inquisitive questioning uh, gives you the, uh, forced you to answer. That is what ethical reasoning is all about. And, and so you've got to ask question, 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 reasoning it, reasoning it, reasoning it. And then when you try to reason it, what, uh, basis you rely upon to reason that is you need to really enrich your knowledge uh and and from here or from there or textbook here or textbook there or consulting with people right so ideally right or normatively following certain ethical protocol or ethical principle where should we be you know at this stage that we are ceo as a, you know, especially our vision is to be a leader, uh, to be, an, uh, you know, a, a very impressive, the innovative product developments in our, you know, maybe in medical field. Where are we? Right? And how do we argue? It meanings that we are slowly thinking cognitively. So how do we argue or provide reasoning, right? For the higher forms of ethical morale reasoning, okay? Why do we need to move from pre-conventions to convention to post convention. So, so these are very, very important. Does our executive morale reasoning becomes more objective, you know, uh, 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 universals and, uh, and uh, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, everybody, uh, we have a principles that no one should cheat. Uh, no one should, uh, you know, uh, uh, no one should be cheating the company uh, because by cheating, 
uh, and if we allow any things to cheat, then we will uh, miss the uh, in information for making sound judgment. And maybe we are, uh, you know, uh, producing some quality defect, defective qualities, and that would uh, jeopardize and harm the customer. So it is very important that we uh, really uh, to rely upon uh, more uh, objective uh, evidences and 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 sound judgment and with a strong philosophy to uh, allow us to uh, uh, evaluate where we stand uh, uh, upon uh, uh, at this uh, moment, right? If we uh, want to be successful. And uh, uh, business ethics uh, from the perspective of strategy, research, sustainability, uh, it's uh, uh, really it's just the uh, you know strategy is about the way and being the way which includes your uh, your uh, you know uh, capability and how you use the resources and competencies and how you develop your organization how you develop your product how you're going to align your product to the market so really all this uh, sustainability is about uh, uh, the ability to survive and thrive. Uh, over the long run, and uh, and especially this uh, long run means that you can sustain your cash flow. So from a strategy standpoint, uh, sustainability is this ability to uh, have the competition uh, performance, competitive performance uh, over a long run. Okay, and it's uh, otherwise you will be shortage of cash flow, and then slowly will jeopardize your working capitals, and then from there you are not able to. You know, if you're not able to get uh, sufficient uh, uh, I mean, liability to pump the cash in, then your ability to, uh, you know, leverage and use your cash on your uh, asset side will, uh, will, will, will slowly degrade and then your, uh, your cash flow, your asset, you know, your balance sheet will shrink in, 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 in that uh, capability. So from an economic perspective, sustainability is uh, uh, refers to long-term competitive advantage. So the meaning is that we have to, uh, you know, uh, use uh, ethics. Well, if you let's let's, it's very quite uh, interesting. If you if you are if you are you know demonstrating, for example, ethical leader, ethical leadership, and if you are if you if you are uh, you know uh, rewarding uh, uh, without bias and. You know, everybody's in your uh, companies are innovative, and you are innovating. Uh, you are rewarding them uh, on an equal basis, and you kind of motivating everybody's to participate. A value call creation is to participate and to co-create. Maybe even to the point of involving customers and involving competitors to be a part of your uh, uh, creativity or innovation ecosystem. And, and, and so that you can generate a lot of ideas and, and that will therefore uh, brings you the competitive advantage. And if you can prolong uh, that uh, strategies and the way you manage your company or your business in, a, in all the time, innovatively and adapting to the ecological, you know, e uh, ecosystem landscape, business landscape, then you are creating competitive advantage long-term, okay? So this, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, very, very important. And so I, uh, you know, business ethic, I, I don't want you to, you know, uh, you know, many of the textbook, when they go into the business ethic, uh, it's very philosophy. And at the end, just keep on reading and reading and reading and nothing happened, you know, in a business end. And so it is very important that we have to have uh, uh, applications in, uh, in applications in business. Uh, uh, on, on the philosophy. So it is application and philosophy uh, at the same time. And that is getting a superior economic return over your competitors that you can do something better than a competitor. And that is what we means by competitive advantage. Well, it could be the, you know, if you go into the detail, where are the sources? What are the, where, what, what give you the competitive advantage? It could be the capacity of your company uh, production. It could be the capabilities of your teams. It could be the technological advantages. Well, doesn't matter. Those are the sources, but uh, it, uh, it could be, 
It could be competitively different, uh, you know, differentiation that drive your competitiveness. It could be the way you produce things that are cost competitive. Well, it doesn't matter, right? But it can, you know, it, it, all this issue. But the key point is whatever you do competitively to the competitor, you have some advantage, right? That is where the ultimate source of competitive advantage comes into the picture from the strategic standpoint. And, and uh, sustainability, uh, 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 culture, social, environmental aspects are the company practices that, uh, that you also need to focus. So whatever, whatever you do, you do in a way that do not uh, and, and harm the society. And, and, and not just simply don't harm the society and on, don't touch upon the society. Try to do something with the society. Try to make use of the society. The society has a lot of resources. Why don't we make use of it? Why, you know, why we let them stand alone? So it is active engagement with society that you can allow you to be creatively, you know, using those resources. Open innovation is part of the, uh, you know, uh, interactions between you and the society. So this, uh, it's the, uh, the social uh, uh, practices that you, you know, you can innovate, like social innovation, social entrepreneurship. What does it mean? It means that your entrepreneurial, you know, ability to, uh, to you know, sense the opportunity and respond to the opportunity and with the entrepreneurial characters of consistency engagement uh, in, in, in dealing with all these opportunity and challenges and courageous and, and, and think in terms of like a rich daily, a uh, rich day uh, for, uh, you know, to set up a systems to allow you to get as much, uh, to earn the money as much as possible rather than letting your bodies and, and your brain. And, and so this kind of entrepreneurship and you use that intelligence to, and apply it to society to solve the social problem that becomes social entrepreneurship. So if you really understand entre entrepreneurship and if you understand ethics, and no need to study and you just combine together chemical reaction and bombs dropped into the air and the water and you just let it you know observe and see the chemical reaction and you will understand the characteristics of social entrepreneurship and this is what descriptive ethics is all about. Descriptive ethics, there are two, there are a couple of approaches to ethic, right? One of the ethical approaches that how to make you smart intelligence in making ethical decision is, is taking an approach called descriptive ethics. And that descriptive ethic is describing the phenomena of your chemistry between the two to learn something about, uh, you know, the principles of business ethic, rather than just normatively following the principle ethic. I, like I tell you, you normatively, uh, you know, uh, captures the memory and then record it and then apply it, right? Well, so it's descriptive. Look at the patterns, generate the theory. You look at the theory, normative theory, and then apply it, right? I think that the prescribe prescriptive, right? And so uh, uh, this Peter Drucker's, the fathers of uh, management, uh, tell us that strategy is really nothing but doing the right thing, and tactic is doing things right. And 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 and, and uh, so if you um, uh, or, or you can just say that you know, forget about strategies and tactics. You can just okay on the on the horizontal axis is doing the right thing, and the other one is do the things right. So somebody's told you what to do, uh, and, 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 and the criteria, and you do it right. That is that that is that is a very important part of the of this uh, of this uh, business ethic. So if you do not do it right uh, according to the criteria, then you produce defect. Product and and uh, so I think it's about doing the right thing and doing it right. Uh, but the key point about this is that it shares the essence of strategy and also shares the understandings of the, the you know the things on on the routine the the tactics and and combination of these two or do the right thing and do the wrong thing. Uh, I do the right things and, 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 and the degree. Uh, uh, and, and the doing the uh, things right, uh, the degree instead of it, uh, it really tells a lot of story of the outcome. And, and so meanings that the ethical situation, the ethical behavior, the ethical uh, action produces some consequence. And if you look at it, do the right thing. If you do the right thing, 
uh, and, and uh, do the right things, uh, you know, effectively. And and if and then you really do the right things and do the do the things right, well, right thing and do it right. Ah, it is thriving. Uh, you continue to try, to to thrive, to excel, to be. But if you if you uh, uh, if you do the right things, uh, uh, you know, good effectively, but you do the right things inefficiently. You know, not so good. You know, not very good. If you should not do, do the right, do the things right, but not, 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 not to the extent of very efficiently doing it. And so, pretty low end of the doing things. I'm still novice, right? I, if you ask, if you employ the persons, right, do the right things, do the things right, and it's slowly doing it, right? Well, it probably can survive, but it is not going to give you, you know, leader, right? Okay, but if you do the things. Wrong thing uh, that is very, very, very bad. Okay, that is that is unethical. Uh, the basis of all the ethical, uh, uh, you know, issue uh, is happening on the right hand side. So you die quickly if you do it right on the wrong thing. Okay, it's wrong thing, but you do it do it right according to the wrong criteria. And it, boom, you die immediately, and otherwise you will die slowly. So make sure that we. We, uh, you know, as uh, leaders uh, in our company, we have to establish the strategy and also the proper cultures and training and discipline that that allows people uh, not to fall into, so that the people will not fall into this uh, uh, ineffective uh, doing uh, wrong things domain. Okay, uh, because on this direction, you, on this zone, you will die quickly and uh, or die slowly. Okay, so very, very important. I think it's beyond uh, vision in a sense that ethic is really the value basis of whatever we do. It is the principle, it is the, the, the philosophical direction, it is the paradigmatic uh, understanding, it is the basis of where we come to that. It is our value system. It is way we have picked up and learned since we were young, and so on and so forth. So value stands uh, uh, represent who we stand for, what we do uh, stand for, okay, and things like that. So it's standing who we stand for is our characters, right? Our integrity, our character. What do we stand for is the principles, right? The, and the ontological principles or the utilitarianism principles, and the vision. Once we have this strong, no one we're gonna rock our value right and so our ethic is very strong we will not cheat means we're not cheat and then from there we can build our vision uh where we want to go how we gonna uh, vision right where we want where we want to go how we gonna go, do it right the mission some of the uh direction mission what we uh, what we do and how we gonna uh, you know do and motivation and purpose and then from there we we you know we we break it down vision but we break it down to you know, uh, objective that first we're going to be number one objective is to consolidate our culture, to develop our culture. Objective number two is going to set up a computer system. Artific you know, uh, uh, number three is to you know, chill and nourish the in, you know, in artificial intelligence. And then, okay, how are we going to do that? Well, maybe we have to exploit, uh, the, you know, uh, foreign technologies and strategy, right? So this objective and strategy, and then from there we do it and they invest the money and then we can have the uh, uh, KPI, key performance indicator milestone to see, oh, have we reached uh, to that artificial intelligence there? Have we reached that objective stage and, and so on and so forth. So this is a sequential uh, doing the right thing and do it right, right? So if from doing the right things from the top and slowly moving down to the doing the right things right. So strategy um, uh, provides a conceptual guru. Uh, uh, strategies can, is a cognitive, uh, uh, you know, uh, evaluations of what we can do, what we should do, so that we can gain competitive advantages. Uh, so it's a conceptual goal, uh, gives uh, shared meaning uh, uh, because we once we know what we're gonna do uh, in order to win uh, or to excel in the market or to sustain competitive advantage, and and that becomes a direction. And way uh, 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 to guide all the different uh, relationship, you know, of the networks of the departments, right? And uh, separate functional activities, and, and, and so that everyone uh, can uh, know because they know what to do, so they can coordinate and interact with each others uh, to uh, to move the whole company 
uh, towards one uh, a common uh, direction, and and so it's uh, so it's, it is like a a, a a central theme guiding and coordinating all the actions. So if you want to coordinate uh, your actions, one of the very important thing is the strategy. And strategy provides uh, the focus that allowed uh, every individuals, in, uh, including the suppliers in the companies, to uh, to be ability to know where you're going to invest your uh, resources, whether it's intellectual resources, the you know energies, the time resources, the monetary resources, the attention, uh, and, and so that you will continue to focus without distraction. Uh, and 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 uh, to achieve your goal, and that is what strategy is all about. If you can see your everybody moving in that direction, then uh, reflectively speaking, you also can probably understand that your strategy is probably uh, probably a good strategy. Otherwise, if everybody is not really efficiently utilizing the energies, attention, or get distracted easily, uh, and is not able to achieve the goal. Uh, and, and uh, co uh, cohesion is not there, uh, then probably you know that uh, uh, strategy, your companies may not exist or it's, it's not a good strategy. Maybe it's only tactics, okay? Uh, and so we, uh, um, in, in a way, strategy is like a, a cognitive and mental filters. Uh, but again, we have to be careful. Sometimes strategy is not a cognitive and mental filter. It is the mental and cognitive filters that filter up the, all the information that allow us to focus on only certain direction and certain con con contents of the strategy. So we really have to uh, look into this uh, uh, our uh, cognitive mental uh, model, uh, and uh, because the because we see the world through uh, mental futures. Okay, for example, if I teach you, um, let's say, if I teach you a business model canvas. So as soon as I teach you, or I teach you SWOT swap analysis, or I teach you Michael Porter's uh, value change concept, or I teach you uh, uh, industry uh, uh, structural analysis, as soon as I teach you, it becomes your cognitive schema. It becomes your future, and you future everything, and, and whatever I tell you is all the, you know, you will think in that direction. So it is, uh, and, and, and of course, that is a strategy as a result coming into the picture. But the, and, and, and because of that the strategy that you sh shape by this uh, uh, future, it also shape your organizational behavior because, the, you know, the way you think it's just like business model canvas, the way you think it's just like make a border value check, the way you think it's just SWOT, the way you think it's just like uh, the structural uh, analysis of Michael Porter. And so the direction will, the uh, mental schema uh, will shape your organizational behavior. So, uh, and uh, strategy serves as an important mental model in shaping organizational behavior, as well as the mental model that shape the strategy that shape the organizational behavior. So people use mental model, okay, uh, such as cognitive schema, as I've just told you, right, uh, business campus is uh, SWO, whatever is the, 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 the things that gives you the ability to think in that direction, and it's called cognitive schema and the knowledge, you know, if I, if I teach you, if you don't have the knowledge, you will not have the ability to think uh, in that direction. So if you have no uh, teaching, uh, no no learning, uh, no no uh, not yet acquired the knowledge of human resources, you will not be able to probably you know uh, fully utilize the uh, uh, human resource practices to leverage your human resource uh, capability. So it is very 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 important that we use the mental model. Uh, and, and understands the mental models in what forms, in what shapes, could be cognitive schemas, could be knowledge, could be, you know, uh, uh, business model structures, uh, whatever, right? And, and those uh, uh, those uh, uh, schemas, uh, mental models, uh, they will uh, constrain your thought process within that. And that is what we mean by single loop learning. Uh, learning, we, as soon as I teach you what to do, or as soon as somebody tell you what to do, and you're it's like programming you to go within that loop. So if you set your thermometers uh, 40 degrees Celsius and if the temperatures goes up, you will reduce the temperature uh, you know, to the 40 degree and, 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 and otherwise will uh, uh, do something about with this uh, refri refrigeration systems or heating system to increase the temperatures to that uh, 40 degree, right? To this, uh, 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 this uh, thermodynamics uh, refrigeration system. 
And so uh, uh, this is what we means by uh, people use the mental model uh, uh, to help people filter and interpret the complexities of the information of the world, and and uh, and so they can uh, turn the world uh, 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 into a more simplified world. So uh, which is good too. So simple, you know, mental model. This is good because if I if we do not use SWOT, we will not know how to you know manage uh, into understanding the, the situations of where we are relative to the external world. So uh, that uh, mental model give us the a simplicity of understanding the complexities of the world. And, and so uh, stimuli, anything that we expose, uh, that we encounter, uh, will uh, uh, informations uh, uh, inter uh, uh, you know, interact with all the objects in the world will then uh, uh, impact on our mental model. Then it will filter our thinking processes uh, and then guide us with a strategy and then uh, shape our uh, uh, behavior. So models, and realities therefore are mutually interacting with each other okay so uh, in in a sense uh we use the mental models to like mrs model the canvas or swot to approximate the reality otherwise the reality is very complicated right it's impossible to understand and then the reality uh uh once we do that once we use the mental model, we act on it, we invest on it, our company start to operate and then it approximate the reality and then and then the reality uh, will give us the feedback whether our model is good or bad, okay? So this interaction uh, uh, is necessary for sustainability, necessary for ecological as well as human community sustainability and ability to establish this uh, a framework of interrelationship that is called ethic, morality. So if we really care about our company, if we really care about our society, we need to establish this uh, relationship between model and reality. And, and so uh, why uh, uh, China's establishes or, or other company, our countries establishes a lot of camera because they want to understand how uh, you know, this uh, reality, the criminals or, or maybe the, you know, the uh, other or the leaders of these societies are being uh, maintained in such a way that it will not take away all their police resources so that they can shift uh, to a better level of understanding. So it is uh, 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 really important that we have to use even the technology uh, to help us uh, uh, establish the linkages between models and reality. So in a way, the mentals, our mental model, which is the way we interpret the world in the, you know, in, 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 in the art uh, mental processes. And, and therefore, it, to some degree, it is uh, 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 subjective. And then we put them, uh, and which is really nothing but uh, uh, yeah, of the uh, of reflections of this uh, uh, real world. Uh, physical world. So the real things and processes, uh, a real world, we call it world one, and the mental uh, world, we call it world two, the subjective world. And then once we, uh, the understanding of these two, and we put it into a conceptual framework that allow all the people to understand in easily, we call the uh, objective world. So for example, we have the physical world uh, and, you know, apples falling, and then we have the mental world that something is going on, uh, you know, mental falling uh, and, and uh, subjectively interpreting and understanding the, uh, the, the, uh, there is some uh, direction, gravitational direction and certain uh, weight or whatever. And then, and then you translate uh, a, a into a conceptual framework, a model called F equal to MG or F equal to MA, uh, force equal to mass time acceleration, the conceptual. So establishing the world tree. So the relationship between world two, world three, and world one is very, very important. And, and um, if you look into literature, um, business research, we have this uh, uh, data, which is the physical world. And we have this, uh, uh, all these conceptual uh, models, and uh, which is the world three. And if you want to establish the conceptual world, uh, your conceptual model and this, uh, and the data, uh, the theory and the data, it, it, it's, it's not so simple. It has to go through another world, which is called the mental thinking's world. 
It could be your statistical thinking. It could be in a subjective, uh, 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 qualitative patterns analysis. And so that is that analysis allow you to bridge between the theory and a model, and as well as your uh, your the uh, uh, physical world. So we have this world one, uh, which is your data. World three, which is your uh, conceptual theory, uh, and uh, and establish the relationship between these two. Uh, and allow uh, your concepts to better reflect the data uh, it uh, need to filter uh, through this uh, mental model, which is your uh, uh, analytical process, okay? It could be qualitative. Okay, so uh, we will uh, stop uh, 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 this page and uh, uh, hope that, uh, and you can see there's 12 pages and it really take a long time. Uh, 